Alright, let's see if someone has made a tutorial about explanations about how to fight the guards. Psh, who am I kidding? I already know they didn't do it, come on! They didn't do a tutorial about how to get Najra, why would they do a tutorial about how to fight guards? And in fact, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna populate YouTube of this content. This is how to fight all the type of guards in the game. So, some quick notes before beginning, I'm gonna cover all the fights in two different ways, with one party member and with three party members to look at the differences. And also remember, all the guards have a very similar body conformation, so the things I say about the first guard can be applied to all the others unless I say so. So, let's start with the guard, the basic one, the one you will see in most of your first runs. The main problems here are the hand with the meat cleaver, the other hand and the stinger. What do they do? The hand with the meat cleaver is gonna cut off one of your arms if he's able to hit you. We're gonna discuss the other arm in a minute. And the stinger basically has a chance every turn to do a somewhat powerful attack on you. It's a low chance, but at least it doesn't do any negative effects. So, what does the other arm do? Basically, after you start the battle, you have a turn. Then you have another turn, and at the end of that second turn, if the guard still has that other arm, she is gonna take a step closer and you're going to have a coin flip, if you miss it, she's gonna do a very powerful attack on you. On the other hand, if you cut off her other arm, he will stop doing this coin flip attack, but he's gonna start using tackle on top of all the other moves, which is an attack that doesn't do any status injuries, but it's just free damage in and we don't want it, right? And you may say, then I think the coin flip attack is bad, I have to get rid of the arm. No, that's where you're wrong. There is a way to avoid the attack. If you guard with your main character, the attack is gonna be completely avoided. Now there is a more complex thing. Due to things that I don't know, you remember how I said that you have one turn and then in the other one you basically have to guard, otherwise the coin flip attack is gonna kill you? Well, after you guard, you have two free actions, and then on the third turn you have to guard to avoid once again the attack. I don't know why, and from that moment on, of course, it's gonna be two free turns, guard, two free turns, guard. Otherwise, you're pretty much dead. So, how do you face the guard? You start by sewing off immediately his hand with the meat cleaver, because we don't want to have our arms cut off. And then, in the other turn, you can do two things. You can escape the battle, and in that way you're going to reset the fight and the guard is still gonna have one end missing. But I don't suggest this because, uh, you know, if you fail to escape, the guard is gonna do the coin flip attack. I suggest to guard, you may take the damage from the stinger, yeah, but we are guaranteed to not die this way. After that just destroy the stinger so no more free damage is gonna come in and now He's harmless, he cannot do anything, you can just kill it. And this is what happens when you have three party members. I suggest at least two of them attacking the arm with the meat cleaver, so if someone of them uh, uh, misses, the other one is gonna deal some free damage. Then again, this is just the starting enemy, so nothing to worry about, honestly. And also, you know, since he is harmless, if you have some rings that do HP regen or mind regen, you basically have a way to farm them as long as you keep guarding on the correct turns. You can just guard on all the turns, because you are safe anyways. Now let's go to the second one, the infected guard. It's the same as the first guard, but there is one more thing on the guard's body, a flower. If that flower reaches the end of the turn, it's gonna put chaos on one of your party members. It's not called chaos, the status, but I think most Final Fantasy players will understand what I mean. Your characters are gonna start attack randomly, and you will need a warm juice in order to remove it. If you're alone, I suggest that you equip either a Solmosnake Soul, obtained by killing the Solmosnake boss fight, or, more simple, our arm guards, because we're going to do something here. We don't want to get chaos on our party member, so we're gonna destroy the flower on the first turn. We're gonna get a lot of damage, yes, and even more because on the second turn we have to guard, you know, we don't want to get even more damage. Then after that you can just destroy the, you know, the hand with the meat cleaver, the stinger, and you're good. But anyways, I definitely don't suggest to fight this alone. Instead, with more party members, the situation is more sustainable. You know, 
Here is quantity over quality. Having three party members will allow you to win even without having arm guards or summon sneak soul. You can just make one of your party members attack the flower and chew the arm with the meat cleaver. Because even if, you know, one of our party members get chaos, the meat cleaver is gone, so we're not going to take any damage to our arms. Of course, you have to decide in base of the fact that if you have some worm juice with you. Now there is the elite guard. Wait. Why the hell would you fight the Elite Guard alone? Uh, I don't have to question the problem, I have to resolve it. So a good way that I found is actually equipping the Salmon Snake Soul and then your best weapon or whatever, your best way to deal damage, even spells of course are allowed, and immediately destroy the hand with the Morning Star, because that's gonna put on us Broken Bones, which is a permanent HP, maximum HP reduction. And also by getting rid of the Morning Star, on the second turn there won't be the Coin Flip attack. And after that it's pretty easy, you just destroy the other parts and remember why I'm not attacking the torso immediately, because the guard is not gonna fall, I mean it's not gonna vanish from the screen until it's the end of the turn and you know, if you just attack the torso and you deal enough damage, the, the guard still has the arms alive, they're gonna attack you, they're gonna deal a lot of damage. While alone I used a very powerful weapon to attack the elite guard. So while in a group I'm gonna use uh, mediocre weapons, we may say. Here the strategy is to use pheromones on a party member that has arm guards or summon snake soul, so we are sure he is gonna be the one to get attacked, and the other two party members are gonna attack the hand with the morning star, and after that point it's as the previous one, it's very easy. We're almost done, only two missing, the Moonless Guard, I HATE the Moonless Guard. Just increase your defense to the maximum amount possible for your equipment, and what you have to do is destroy the arm with the Meat Cleaver, and then just of course use the guard when needed, and just attack the torso, just attack the torso. The torso is gonna do a lot of damage to you, but you don't have to care. You're gonna take damage in this battle if you're by yourself, you cannot do a lot about it but at least you don't get any status effects, you know. And in a group uh, the situation is nothing different, you just destroy the arm and then attack, you know, the torso. And now the Ballista Guard. I have two ways to do this solo. So, the first one is of course destroying the Ballista, it will require two turns, but at least on the first turn the Ballista is not gonna do anything. And then just destroy the Stinger, you're gonna take a lot of damage from uh, Tackle, but you should win. The other way in solo is just attack the torso. Why? Because the attack with the Ballista is gonna be performed at the end of the second turn, and it's gonna happen after he checks if he is dead. If he is dead, he's gonna die and will not do the attack of the Ballista. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna take an arrow in the head, probably. But then again, I personally don't suggest to fight the uh, guard with the Ballista by yourself, uh, because it's just too much RNG. If you fail an attack, you're done. With more party members, it's another story. You can just use one to destroy the Stinger, and all the other ones are gonna attack the Torso. You don't care about the Ballista. The Ballista is gonna be destroyed at the end of the second turn. You don't care. And this is pretty much over. I hope it was helpful.